It's been a minute since we've done a home lab video in our home labbing series, but uh, today is the day. And one of the things that spurred me on was the addition of this little booger right here. Now, this is the new Raspberry Pi 16 gigabyte edition. So today, what I want to talk about is something that was brought to my mind when I purchased this. What am I going to use it for? Now, that goes for any type of Raspberry Pi project or for building your home lab. You need to decide which applications that you really want to use, and that'll dictate maybe how many pies you need, for example. Now, you can use other things like a mini PC that's going to be more powerful, but they are bigger, they are louder, they're typically a little bit more expensive. If you're looking to go that route, you may want to look at something like an N100 mini PC. I use a lot of those as well, but these things being so quiet, I can actually power them off of Ethernet. So there's a lot of advantages to a Raspberry Pi, including GPIO pins if you're into physical computing. And again, the community surrounding the Raspberry Pi is absolutely phenomenal. I've never had any issues in this community. Everyone's there to help you. We're all open source people. And I really think this credit card size computer is the jam. I can't speak enough about it. I love these things. I actually name each one of them. This one's name is Killer. Arr, I like it. Uh, so enough of that. Uh, today's video is just going to be me going over some of the applications that I use on my home lab, just in case you guys are wondering, and just in case you need some ideas on what you can self host. Okay, this is going to be a bit more free form. I'm not going to go into extreme detail about each of the applications. I just want to give you an idea of how I manage my home lab and what applications I do use. Now, the first thing when you're setting up a home lab, what you're going to do is probably install Docker, Portainer, or some type of management system that is built usually on top of Docker or Kubernetes, something like Casa OS. Now, if you're not familiar with these things, Docker basically just gives you the ability to cut up your server and isolate each one of your applications. Applications. This is going to prevent a lot of hassle. So you have what we call containers. Now each container inside of Docker will hold an isolated instance of your software, for example. So this is an example of Portainer, which is just sits on top of Docker and is going to give you the ability to manage some of your containers. Now when you get here, you can see here, each one of these is either a different service or it's an actual application. Now in red, you can see they're off, but uh, this was just a quick overview of one way you can do it. This is more of a, uh, I don't want to say uh, lesser than way of doing it because uh, in many ways it's a better way to do it, but it, it, let's say it's of a more manual way of, of doing it than using something like Casa. But Casa, what it does is it's built on top of a Docker environment, but it's going to give you just a, in my mind, a little bit better of a GUI. Uh, this is up to debate. There's going to be a lot of you out there that are in the home lab world that might say, oh my God, he's using Casa. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, especially if you're a beginner. And I, as you can see, I still use it a lot. And in fact, I use it for, you know, kind of like a dashboard. So Docker is a something you can install on top of something like Debian. Uh, you can put it on your Raspberry Pi. This is going to take care of, you know, installing something like Docker manually or Portainer manually because it's built in. They also have a marketplace, uh, an app store. You can go into the app store. You can see here, you can actually install quite a few different app stores here. And it has a lot of the applications built in. So this is going to prevent you from doing these things uh, manually. Uh, and I shouldn't say prevent, it's just going to make it easier. Uh, you can still do it manually, but you can see I can do just one click installs. So you don't have to worry about making a Docker uh, file, a Docker compose file and doing it all by yourself. Now, if you're someone that is into that, I highly recommend it as well because you can do a lot more modifications, but this is a really good platform and I highly suggest you use it. If you're someone that's new, you can also put these things on a NAS if you want. Uh, and some NASs even have their own management system. They're all pretty much built on Docker as well, but I really do like Casa OS. Now, a couple of things I want to show you. Um, this is my NetOps, and I think this is pretty important as well. This is my uh, addresses and everything else, but I wanted to show you this just because these are my nodes. So as I mentioned, I name all my Raspberry Pis, and this is what they're hosting. So obviously everything pretty much, if I'm not using uh, something like uh, Casa OS, then I'll use 
Portainer. So that all of them have Portainer. This one has Nextcloud, Duplicity, and Olama. We'll get deeper into it. But I just wanted to let you know how important documentation is. If you've seen any of my other videos, um, this is just a good way to lay it out. Uh, of course, I have all my different main ones here and just the different applications that I have on them just to keep track. Now, some of them are over here on Casa as well. I just wanted to share that with you because I think that's important. So some of the highlighted ones I'll talk about. Now, this one here is actually actually a uh, to-do management of, I can't say this name, Vakunja, <laughs> Vikunja, Vikunja. Um, and this is basically uh, just a way to manage your to-dos open source, and, and I really do like it. Uh, the other thing I'm using, obviously, is Plex. Now, I think this is a big one for most people. I have quite a d different uh, ones hosting different applications, well, different machines hosting different instances of Plex, uh, but Plex is a really strong media um, platform that can serve all of your media, your TV shows, your videos, things like that. The other thing I use is Nextcloud. Uh, I don't think I have this up right now, but Nextcloud is kind of, think of it like a full office suite. So think of it like hosting your own um, uh, repository, hosting your own workspace, like if you use Google Workspace or you use um, Microsoft 360. Uptime Kuma, Kuma, I highly recommend. This basically is just a monitor. You can see here, as I mentioned, these are my five different pies that are the backbone of my um, my home lab. So this is base, B, Plexi Pi, Stan, Tough, and then of course we're going to have Killer on here eventually. But this is just going to list out all my services, and this way at a glance I can see if the are up or down now coupled with that do i have it here is godify now godify is interesting because this is actually going to work in conjunction kind of with casa in a way and um it, not really but basically it's hand in hand because casa or, or sorry um uptown kuma isn't going to notify you so what Godify does is allow you to push messages to your phone, for instance, if something's down. So Godify works kind of hand in hand with Uptime Kuma. They're two different applications, but I really do like using them together. Again, this is a status board, but it's not going to ping you necessarily. You might be able to set it up, but I prefer Godify. This just handles all my messaging so that I know if something's down. So this is how I monitor my network, which would be Godify as well as Uptime Kuma. Now, after Upcon Kuma, we do have Open Media Vault. Now, this is one of my NAS software. Again, I just have it linked here. Uh, if you're interested in any of my NAS stuff, I do have another video. You can check it out below. But this is all my NASs. So Open Media Vault, True NAS Core, and Unraid. Now, I have these three, obviously, because I'm testing them. Now, these are three different machines. This is a, uh, which one is that one on? This is an N100. True NAS is actually on my Proxmox box, which basically, again, is just the NAS. And this one is on an AMD 9, so this is pretty powerful. And then my Unraid is another N100 box uh, that I have. All these are just NASs. Now, Proxmox is my big uh, computer that I built. It's also in my rack, and this is where I do all my virtualization and testing. Proxmox is an incredible uh, platform that is a hypervisor. If you're not familiar with a hypervisor, this is just Gives you the ability to set up virtual machines. Uh, Flame, I don't really use. That's a dashboard. Uh, my wiki, my wiki is not self-hosted. I did that on purpose uh, because I initially thought I might make this public. So this is actually hosted on DigitalOcean, I believe. If I go back here, you can see it. White NAS. Yeah, DigitalOcean, and then my only other paid is is Link War, uh, Warden, and that is just a bookmark. So these two I actually pay for, and the reason I did this for Hill Space is just because uh, I originally thought I might open it up, and it's something that I might open up to my members. So if you're not a member, um, this might be one of the perks that I have, and it's just going to have all of my tutorials in one place, all my tips. Uh, cheat sheets, things like that for home labbing. Uh, more to come on that, but just to tell you a little bit about that wiki. So the wiki uh, is a uh, JS written application that you can self-host. It's a great wiki platform. I highly recommend it. Um, Hill Dash is another one I don't really use. Up here in terms of, um, I think we skipped over a few, in terms of dashboards, I I, I pretty much use this as a dashboard, but I also use Glance. And Glance is really cool because you can set this up if you know a little bit about 
HTML and CSS. You can do a lot of cool things here, completely customize it. So this is my, a little bit bigger than the dashboard. You know, it's got my videos, it's got some of my stocks and crypto. It's got a lot of different things that I've put in here. I also made some different tabs. So here's all the YouTube channels and then all the Reddits that I follow. So this is a good way that I just kind of have my own way to see what's going on on Reddit and to see what's going on with all the things that I really like to keep uh, track of hacker news. I think probably self-hosted is on here. Some Twitch channels. I don't even think, I think this came default. I don't know who these people are. <laughs> so anyways, uh, it does come laid out, but you can modify it quite a bit. Uh, I may go into more detail on a lot of these things. If it's something that you're interested, let me know. Now, the other one is uh, Nevadrome. Nevadrome, this is actually where I self-host uh, my music. And you can see here, it has all my music uploaded. And um, I'll talk about another application that I use so I don't have to open up ports to stream it outside if I'm on the road or something like that. But Nevadrome is a, a really good management system for uh, your MP3s if you're someone that has those and doesn't just stream. This kind of has taken the place of Spotify, for example, for me. Um, SpotTube, MeTube, these are... How do I put this? Um, backup R, backup R, if you get that. Um, this allows you to back up, I believe, YouTubes, and this enables you to back up uh, Spotify, okay? So I'll leave it at that. Hoarder is really cool. Now, Hoarder is what I use for a lot of my link management they have. I host this myself, and uh, they, they actually have up here, you can see they have a um, what is this? Uh, sorry, I'm blanking. This is a Chrome extension. And if I hit this Chrome extension, it's going to add this as a bookmark, but you can see here, these tags, they're actually coming from AI. So I've, um, integrated this into pooling from a self-hosted instance of Lambda. Uh, is it Lambda? Yeah, I think it's Lambda. And that's basically an open source self-hosted AI container. And what it's doing here is it's looking at the page and then adding these tags for you. So that becomes super important important, right? Because then I can go in and I can go here and look at the tags and I can pull up what I want. You can see here I've kind of organized some things. I'm a little bit behind. I need to come back here and kind of drag them in, but I don't have to worry about like putting labels on it. AI handles that. You can also do it um, where you link it to open AI and it'll be a little bit faster, but I personally don't want those greedy white dudes to have my information. So I self host my own AI and hook it up to this. So this is hoarder and this is what I use to manage all of my book marks. Let's see. What do we have after that? We talked about Godify, Unraid, Proxmox, Flame, Wiki, Hill, Radar. Again, this is one of my R stack. This gives me the ability to download free and um, not um, commercial stuff. Uh, Qubit is a torrent file that basically uh, torrent management, which basically allows me to add torrents and download things. Stand Portainer. Again, that's just Portainer. And here is Olama. Um, I, I think I said it wrong before, but Olama is basically my self-hosted instance. I don't have it up and running right now. I tend to not keep it up and running. Uh, Sonar is, again, another part of the R stack. Overseer is really cool, actually. Uh, this allows you to request things. I'm not going to go into uh, these things because they can be used for other nefarious uh, sources. Now, these two aren't on right now, but Photofrism, that is an application that I use to manage my photos. Tandor, Tandor is pretty cool. It is actually for recipes. So I do like to cook. Uh, and this is where I keep all my recipes together. You can see I have another instance of Olama and in Open Web UI. Olama is the let's call it for lack of a better term, the container that you can then add AI models to. I'll go in, I'll do another video about a lot of these things. So if you're interested, follow along, but I just really thought it'd be um, advantageous for you guys to see what I'm hosting. So a llama uh, is, it, it allows you to add in open source models that you download and you keep it self-contained. So this will give you like a chat GPT, not as good, but um, a chat GPT like environment. I use it a lot for programming and I use it a lot for my own internal research, especially if I'm looking to build something novel that I don't want those like, like, you know, the Elon Musk types to get a hold of because they get all that information. Trust me. And then open web UI is just the UI that it functions within. So this is the engine. You know, this is like the the way the interior of the car that sits on top of it. Uh, and these things work together. And then, of course, Link Warden. This is another one that I use. Now, I pay for this. And this is just to keep... Um, 
also to keep some of my bookmarks. I don't like it as much, but with anything self-hosted, I think it's important to have uh, redundancy. So lastly, I want to talk about one other, which is that redundancy piece. So if I open this up and I go here, this is du du Duplicati. Um, I, it always makes me think of um, Bucatis, like uh, or Ducatis. I don't know if you are motorcycle guys, but uh, I always get it confused. But I use a lot of this, and basically this allows you to back up either to other um, locations or you can actually back it up. And I do a lot of this backing it up to um, with some files that I don't mind if those rich, greedy people see it. I back it up to Dropbox. But du Duplicati is an example of a again another Docker container that I'm using that I can basically back up things. And it's a really good, easy open source way to be a piece of your backup. Okay, so I know that was rapid fire. I appreciate if you got through all of this. There wasn't a whole lot of detail. I just wanted to show you guys what I'm using. You guys can research all these things. And please do give me some feedback if you want to know more about X, Y, and Z. Uh, that'll help me produce these videos and, and hopefully help some others that are getting into this, uh, this field. I had to learn all this pretty much on my own. And I just want to share this back to the community for you guys, especially if you're starting out. Now, the thing about home labbing is you can do whatever you want. But this is a, a really good um, explanation of how I personally use it and some of the applications that I use and that I'm hosting currently, especially with the AI stuff. So I will go through a couple more videos where I get more particular into things like installing Docker, installing Casa, installing a lot of these things, walking through these programs. So if you're interested in that, make sure you follow along. I'll also probably pretty soon put out a video because I think it's really important about my backup strategy and what all I'm doing in order to ensure the integrity of my data. Uh, and it's not just in one spot. It's not just in two spots. It's not just in three spots. Okay, I'm a little bit of a psycho, but I have a lot of my stuff spread around in different places. Some of them I'm leveraging cloud. Some of them I'm leveraging all my different NASs in here. And you're out leveraging things like RAID just to make sure that I have multiple ways to back it up. And folks, I'm going to leave you with this. If you're thinking about a backup strategy and you're saying, oh, I'm just going to use RAID, that is not a backup strategy. That should be a piece of your backup strategy. Trust me, I've got myself in trouble personally with this and i tend to like to uh, learn things the hard way and hopefully prevent you from learning things the hard way anyways i hope you found a value in this my name's hill phantom and i'll see you next time